Welcome back. How many passwords do you have? No, seriously. How many do you have? Maybe you have a couple. Maybe you have half a dozen. Now, how many websites or apps do you use that require a login? I'll go out on a limb here and say it's probably more than the number of passwords you have. What I'm saying here is that you are using the same login details for different sites and apps. Let me go back to that list of passwords. Let's see if I can work out what at least some of those passwords could be. Now, of course, I don't know enough about everyone that's going to watch this to guess your exact password. But let's see if I can guess what that passwords are based on. For example, your password may be based on your children's name. I remember reading a study some time ago that said a good percentage of women choose a password based on their firstborn child. It could be a combination of your child's name and date of birth, for example. Men, on the other hand, tend to have passwords based on favourite sports teams. If you're a football fan, then I would just need to know who you support to be able to start guessing at your password. Then there's the other obvious ones, such as a pet or partner name. Or if it's not names, then it's probably based around significant dates, birthdays, weddings and so on. Did I get close to what your passwords are? If I knew a little more about you, could I realistically guess your passwords? If you're answering yes, then continue watching and I'll explain how to come up with passwords that are just as easy to remember, but a lot more difficult for other people to guess. The strongest passwords, and by that I mean the most difficult to guess, passwords consist of random characters in both lower and uppercase letters. Of course, there should be no pattern to which characters are capitalised. They should also contain random numbers and special characters. Special characters are things like question marks, dollar signs and exclamation marks, basically the top line of your keyboard. The characters you need to press shift plus one of the number keys to get. These are special characters. Once you combine all of these, you'll end up with a password that looks roughly like this one on the screen now. Oh, it should also be at the very least eight characters long. Ideally, it should be over 14 characters long. Now try and memorise that. Go on, I'll give you a minute. Got it yet? No? I'm only joking. It, it would be incredibly difficult to remember a password like this. You could use a password manager. This is a piece of software that keeps all of your passwords in a secure database. One such option is called LastPass, but that is beyond the scope of this video. Instead, let me explain how you could come up with a password that is nearly as complicated as this one, but a lot easier to remember. What is your favourite song? Can you sing the first few lines of it? Great, we have a basis for a password. I'll just use one of my favourite songs, Imagine by John Lennon. If I take the first letter of each word in the first verse, this gives me this. There we go. I've kept the first letter of each line as a capital, and I could easily add a number such as the year the song was released onto the start or end and a special character to finish the, this off. Now, as long as I remember that my password is based on my favourite song, I just need to remember the special character and year, and I'll remember my password. I could do the same with a famous speech or poem if there wasn't a particular song I could remember. In this case, I could keep a written copy of the speech or poem with me as a reminder of my password, but really it's reminding me what my password is. You can, of course, use this technique a number of times to come up with a range of passwords, and as a bonus, you can get to listen to your song you love over and over again while you memorise the lyrics. Ever lost any work? I heard someone say they lost work such as an important document, college dissertation, customer proposal or other such document. Perhaps whatever the file was stored on was lost or the file corrupted and now it can't be opened. Whatever is the reason it can be heartbreaking and potentially costly situation. Imagine if a company were to lose financial information in a similar way. 
Computers do go wrong from time to time. Mechanical parts wear out over time. If the only copy of an important document was on a server that can no longer be used, then there could be significant financial implications for the company. This is why backups are so important. A backup is a process that copies all of your files, data and information to effectively create two versions. One being your original and one backup. Backing up data is a crucial step in protecting it. At its simplest, you can use Windows copy and paste features built into Windows Explorer to make a backup. Select the files and folders you wish to back up and right click on them. Now select copy. Now move to the location you wish to create the backup. For example, I may select a USB drive. Right click a bit of empty space and select paste. Depending on the size of the files and folders, this may take some time. Another way that we can use is to use the zip feature built into Windows. This will allow us to compress the files and folders so they take up less space. This is ideal when creating a backup. To do this, again, find and select the files and folders and right click on them. This time select compress to zip file. Again, depending on the size of the file and folders you have selected, this may take some time. Once complete, you will have a new file created. I can now right click the newly created file and select cut. Now move to wherever you want to keep the backup and right click and select paste. One more detail to say about backups is the importance of keeping an off-site backup. Imagine this, you have followed the advice to this point and you have a backup of all your important files stored on a memory stick that you keep in a drawer of your desk. The desk that is also home to your computer. Now, while you're out, perhaps on holiday, disaster strikes. Maybe there is a flood that wipes out your house. It might be just a leaking or collapsed roof. Whatever the disaster, it takes out your computer and along with it the memory stick that holds your backup. Now, not only do you have to rebuild from the disaster, but you've also lost all your valuable data. If we scale this scenario up to businesses, then often the data the business holds is far more valuable, not just in monetary terms, but in the survival of the business, that often, if this happens, the business does not survive. This is where off-site backups come in very useful. Basically, take one of your backups and instead of keeping it in the same location as your computer and other backups, take it to a different physical location. The physical location should be sufficiently far enough away that should a disaster happen, it is unlikely to affect both locations. Different floors of the same building isn't far enough apart, for example, but different buildings on opposite side of a university campus would probably be enough. Now, if a disaster happens and takes out one of those locations, I still have a copy of my data that I can rebuild from. Software updates are important for the security of your device and to ensure that it is running smoothly. Updates may also add new features or bug fixes that have been created by the software company. Updates aren't always mandatory but they are recommended in order to keep your device running smoothly and securely. The importance of regular software updates is that they help to protect your device from malware, spyware and viruses. Software updates also help to keep your computer running smoothly and at its best performance level. Some software updates will only update certain parts of the software program, while others will require a full system update. Let's take a look at how to keep Microsoft Windows up to date. This is important as Microsoft regularly release security patches that fix potential problems in Windows and Office, which could lead to someone either gaining access to your computer or being able to steal your sensitive information. From the Start menu, select the cog icon to open settings. Once this is open, type in Windows Update into the search box at the top of the window and select Windows Update. Now 
Once you open Windows Update, it may automatically go straight off to look for updates. If not, you will have a Check Now box. Just click that to start the process. Once the check is complete, one of two things will happen. Either you will get a message here saying your computer is up to date, or it will identify one or more updates and automatically begin downloading and installing them. If this happens, the process is mostly automatic. Some updates require you to restart your computer. If that is the case, I suggest waiting until it has installed all the updates and then restart your machine at the end. If you don't restart it yourself, the computer will schedule a restart later. Personally, I find it best to restart at the earliest opportunity when the updates have installed. In summary, during this session, we have discussed passwords. We looked at what makes a good and bad password. We looked at password length and complexity, why you should include upper and lower case letters, along with numbers and special characters. We also discussed backups. I explain what a backup is and why it's important to have a backup. I also explained what an off-site backup is and why it is so important that we keep an off-site backup, particularly for a company where often, if a disaster happens and they lose all the data, often the company doesn't survive. Finally, I outlined why you should keep your computer up to date by installing the latest security and software patches. I walk you through how to do this in Microsoft Windows. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.